I'm sorry, but it's kind of cool when Charles gets forceful. It doesn't happen often, but it's kind of it's kind of hot when he does. Oh God, oh, oh God. So yeah, you best run away in shame, especially in that outfit. Okay, Rogue, she said thunderclap. Now let's save everybody else quickly. Blink's gone. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are here with the season finale. We actually are really here now of X-Men 97. It is the third part of the finale, which is called Tolerance is Extinction Part 3. First two parts, insane. There's not much else to act to say about it. Like they were phenomenal, peak animation, peak television just peak writing everything. Like if there is a way to nominate all three of these, like as, I don't know, for separate awards or one collective award, I don't care. It deserves awards because it's been killing it so far. I mean, I'm saying all three, like I haven't seen, I haven't seen the third one yet, but I have no doubt that we're gonna finish this off in a masterpiece-like fashion. But the last episode, quick recap is that we, just things did not go well. We had the team split up. We had the Earth team, we had the space team. The space team was trying to get Magneto to reverse what he was doing to the Earth so everybody didn't die. And on the ground team, they were trying to take down Bastion and Sinister, both teams doing terribly. And a lot of this is for many reasons, but on the ground team, we see that Bastion, this is kind of his domain. Like he's got everything set up to work from here. And unfortunately, he's got two of the, I don't want to say weaker, but I guess mutants that don't have powers that are necessarily the most effective against him that came after him didn't work out he now has the collar so that will probably be an option that goes right out the window and then on the outside we had gene and nathan literally going up against each other because nathan is now under the control of sinister so we ended her scene with the with her saying i love you to scott which as I said, in animes, that's typically not a good thing to do when something bad is happening. So we'll have to see what happens there. And then in space, we had X-Men versus X-Men battle and it got really ugly. And it ended with Logan thinking that he was doing a fairly fatal blow to M Magneto, which was necessary because he was about to do some very bad damage to Professor X. And Magneto decided to finally let loose and he literally ripped the adamantium from Wolverine's bones. So, so yeah, things are crazy right now. And I have no idea how we're gonna end it. How many minutes is this one? It's 43, so it's the longest episode of the season. <sighs> I'm gonna buckle up, I'm buckling in. I really should have grabbed a drink, but hey, it's all right. Just let's, let's go, let's just do this. So I'm gonna jump in, but just before I do, you know the drill. If you'd like to be in the know of when I do reactions and uploads, I know that this is the end of this particular series, but I'm reacting to all sorts of great things on this channel. I'd love for you to join me in another journey. Please go ahead, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell, and please continue to show love in the comments and with the likes and everything else guys you guys have been awesome i really 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 enjoyed this whole journey with you all right that out of the way let's get into the episode <sighs> right now do we need it anymore at least one happy point in the episode come on guys hey hey oh 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 this is new that is new who was that beside professor x Oh, and they're Whoa, there's more! Two new scenes? <sighs> or Marty stressed. Ah, okay. Or sentimental lady. Oh, not Magnus with real with regular hair. People don't want to be better. They're already the best everything. Best try. Best faith. Run and hide. Oh. Before someone starts dreaming of camps. Hmm. I'm a mutant. <gasps> Charles, that's very, very invasive. Likely can control them too. Likely. Ooh. Look at his face, like you gonna try it? Metal. It bends to my will. Hmm. He said out loud on purpose. Help the world see all we share by by being different. Alas, my new friend. Hmm. In my experience, minds are Ooh. Bend. bars. How shockingly far you've fallen. Oh, the hair is changing. Welcome to your mind, Magnus. Damn, I, I mean, I think he was already there, but... This is a violation. It is. Turn my X-Men against each other. Is this what was happening Allow before he got hit by the world Cyclops? Logan. He meant to murder me. Okay, after. 
Bastion's bastard cyborgs to resume their pogrom. I just don't want everyone to die, Eric. What happens to mutants in a blacked out period? Evolution thrives in darkness. Ooh. He said they better evolve or just pass or away. I will hijack your mind and force you to do so. Psychic penetration risks leaving both our minds shattered. And it looks like Charles is ready to do that. This is so messy. So messy. I mean, he asked nice. I'm sorry, but it's kind of cool when Charles gets forceful. It doesn't happen often, but it's kind of it's kind of hot when he does. But unfortunately, Bastion's back, and all of his little bitches. Hey, Danta! What the hell? Seriously? Doctor Strange? A dream as crippled as its dreamer, built to die. Wow. Buggy stillborns flapping upstream. Really? Cleaning yourselves dry so that the tide can more easily drown you. You think so, huh? So much pontificating. Just get to the point. Time to rise, Phoenix. Despite this little toy you X-Men would use to there abort we go. the bond to my creations. Not abort. He came to your mother, but she was too afraid. You would have been one of the first... Get your filthy paws off her! You all have a lot of talking, you can't do anything. There's destiny inside me. The urges. None choose to be born, Bastion. Right? That's why we must never begrudge them being. Period! You think you're special? But why are all these villains, when they're evolving, growing new hair? Like, he's got a whole goatee now. What, what happened? <sighs> From the Captain America. Being red at the latest token underdog. That's not Black Is that Black Panther? No. Against them. Oh, Maddie. <gasps> That's how that Shadow and, um, oh my God, Shadow and Light. What, what, what were they called again? I reacted to a whole show about them. Psylocke! The, the real Psylocke. Oh, oh. Oh, so many costumes and not enough time to think. How many times did you fail to stop me? Hmm? Fail to save your carbon copy mothers. Keep talking about his mama. Make him speak, Sinister. Please do. 200. 200 times. But how's your mommy, Sebastian? Right? <laughs> Madeline Pryor, never Phoenix, just dead. Again, like you. Um, something you should know about the Phoenix, it rises. And second of all, see how sensitive you got when you start talking about mamas? Okay. But he is as blind as his deadbeat dad and as doomed as it. Yeah, keep talking. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad you kept talking about his mama. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you two should have listened to what time's got to say about my mama. My mama! Can you account for the Phoenix Force? That's what I thought. You are so dumb. <laughs> me, me and Storm same. It's like, oh, it's going to get fun now. Where are you going? Come back. Let's talk. Yeah. Good night. Enough of that. Ooh. Before y'all even got a chance to fight. What are your names again? Shadow and... It's going to tick me off. I'm in! The cameos are too much. It's too much. Defend your master. Really? You run away? I think it rebuilds your past. If so truly. Can you make him stop talking? What about his tongue? All this mutant DNA you stole to stay duct taped together, young and relevant. That's right! But the Phoenix burns away the obsolete. That's right. The underbrush of our fears and insecurities. She said you old trash. No. There's no place for you. You have a nerve, please. Stole this woman's life, another woman's child. Oh God, oh, oh God. So yeah, you best run away in shame, especially in that outfit. <laughs> Thank you more, the petty. She should have killed him. To protect my son. 
That's right. Still my son, technically. Aw, he's not even mad. Oh God, what was that? What's this now? My sentinels and I were meant to save the future. Y'all should have killed him. I don't know. I could have used slaves, camps, or- right, Is that what you're doing right now? Oh, sorry, bro. Being beaten with your own arm is crazy. Oh, he used it to, oh no, that's not good. What the hell is this now? What, 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 what fresh hell is this? I will tear that rock from the heavens and hurl it to earth. You can try. A quick extinction. And then where are you gonna live, bro? I mean, I guess he doesn't need to breathe. Who's Magnus? Oh, shit. Who are you? <gasps> I'm a teacher. Please tell me you didn't go that far. But you must trust me, understand? Only then can I finally help you escape. I don't know if I like this. Is this just to get him out of his own... I don't know. Don't you dare break her heart. Be the best at what you do. Heal. Um, his body was pushed to the absolute max, sir. He's gonna need a minute. My psychic attack shattered Magnus' psyche. You think? Sir, if you're still linked with him when that happens... Both our minds will be lost. It's a gamble and a hell. Half. In order to save the world, we must not lose him. Professor. Professor! Listen, my man's busy! He's more than flesh or metal. More than unstoppable. Bastion is the future incarnate. That's not at all terrifying. Hey, all the other superheroes that just got alerted to how crazy things just got, why are they all still on Earth? I know some of them can fly. Keep us safe, my lord. Oh, yes, praying would be a good idea. We both know how this will go for me. Like, I just learned my powers yesterday, so... Bro, bro, you're giving up? Odds may be bad, but the cards are always in the X-Men's favor. All right, Pete Gambit. His name was Gambit. Remember it! She's still super strong, by the way. Again, exactly. Drag it. Oh, she's still crying. Oh, my girl. Sis, can you breathe? I hope she can hold her breath super long. He's metal. Remember that. Okay, Rogue. She said thunderclap. Now he's going to sit here and talk for 25 minutes. Ugh. All right, guys. Rogue did a really good first strike. Can we get any backup? Anybody? He's not going to fall for that twice. Damn. You can't breathe outside of space. Loved you, Rogue. Oh, thank God. Was that you, Sunspot? Oh, here we go. That's what I said. Now it's gonna be nothing. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and all the superhero name. I like to say that. I like that. Leaders are working fast to avert this mutant doomsday. Leaders are doing what exactly? They're sitting comfortably in a room. Vote yes, and you best pray our children read their textbooks more than their Bibles. It was! Only history could be it's Black Panther! Sir, King T'Chaka is right. We know next to That's what I thought, his father. Well, you tried, bro. That's the new Captain America. Oh no, the one that wanted to be Captain America, but the in-between guy, right? Because we know it's not Sam, but it's also not original. Rogue? Yes. Oh, okay, he knows her. No, she... She left me. Yes, well, oh, you know. And he did. You're a little bit challenging in the love department. You hurt me as you did me, but we never abandoned each other. That's the truth of relationships, most. None know what this is like. Oh, you'd be no, surprised. A lot of people do. Cold. Uh, I'll drown. I have you, Magnus. This is such a good Almost. representation of what grief Even is and how it feels them. when it's at its worst. You don't want to let give into it because it feels like you can't survive it. They took them. Those but you can. Took them. And the rage comes back. Come on, let's coordinate attacks, people. Oh, I don't like that. Not a vacuum! Oh my god. And a rep oh wow. All right, well, that was a nice five minutes. Oh, hello! That's only gonna work once though, isn't it? 
Oh, Jubilee, I always love that she tries so hard. I wish Kirk could like teleport him back to Earth. That'd be so frustrating. Kurt, baby, slow down. He's gonna figure you out quickly. This is crazy that this is one person. All the X-Men, one guy. Okay, Scott, agility. Who's got the stronger will? That's right, Scott, let him have it. Whew. That's what real love is, Bastion. If you actually cared about your mama, you would actually understand. Turned her into some freak. What will you do, child? Slay me with the 4th of July. Haven't heard that one before. I mean, that was pretty good, in fairness. But you can do more, girl. That's right. Don't underestimate fireworks. He's fine. He's absolutely cool. Oh, oh, oh. Keep going, guys. You call yourselves a team? I mean, their teamwork does need a little bit of help. But a family that can't save itself merely works together to die alone. How would you know? Where's your mom? My family. Did it just step on him? And irony. I love it. <laughs> the face he made. Oh, like, yeah, your family don't like you neither. Beast, get out, please. Beast, get out. Can you guys be blasting him while he's doing this, please? Anyone? Okay, Rogue is so badass this season, I can't. Coordinated attack, guys. He can't take everything. He can't be lifting that and fighting all y'all at the same time. Come on. You look so good, Bastion. Stand down, team. Oh. We can't give up. Are we? Just kick him in the nuts. That'd be so petty. We're gonna do what we've been telling humanity to do for years. Stop fighting the future. And embrace it. Parents are human too. Yeah, and yours was not, human. I know how it feels to have the things you trusted, the future you were building, crash down on you. More than you know. This is what she was protecting me from. I massacre you freaks and you're recruiting me? Uh, we didn't say anything about recruiting. We were just saying don't be crazy. This mother, humanity would rather die than have kids like us. He's not wrong about that. Y'all doing all that work. And humanity was like, actually, screw y'all. There goes your family. Go chase him. Oh, no, you're, you're, you're actually digging in. Okay. He doesn't want to. Please go, go with your family. Thank God. Oh my gosh, poor Jean, and she's already had to use the Phoenix Force once. <laughs> not this, not the Fantastic Four. Was it Reed? Oh my God, someone get Jubilee! <laughs> oh, your man came for you. I think this means you gotta get married. I think so. Are there other means to restore Asteroid M's orbit? Theoretically, yes. Perhaps if everyone on the jet. Right, we don't have time for theoretically. Think quickly. Indeed, the odds remain reckless. But if we all work in perfect unison, we may just spare our world a dinosaur's fate. Okay, let's do it quickly. This thing's going fast. Gravity stops for no one. Nathan, I always swore I'd never repeat my father's mistake. The mistake I made when Madeline sent you into the future. Which is walk away. Not saying goodbye. <clears throat> that sort of end. Rambling about the adventures of the X-Men. Rambling. Getting folks inspired. It pissed me the hell off. Hmm. I belonged in those stories too, growing up. Hmm. Those legends really didn't do my folks justice. We gotta go. Your mother told me you had my eyes. Oh, you can do that? Oh, you don't have to say it back. I know you're too thug. Let's go. That was really cool with showing him his eyes. That was actually quite touching. I'm a little choked. Okay, you better let us know, Cyclops. That's right, Storm. 
Yeah, because y'all knocked it out of the sky, dummies. It will strike the east coast of North America. Okay, thank God it's not Africa for once. Woo, Wakanda's safe. <laughs> oh, wow. I can't. I love you, Logan. Stay with me. Morph? Sir, so many things we need to talk about. Down. You hear the down. theme song? I love the change in the uh, pace for it. You were a boy when you lost your family. Mm. That is why you can't see their faces. I grew up trying to see their eyes or smile. Mm. So many nights, scrolling a fantasy of strange faces for a glimpse of my future. Ah, oh, this is hard. When you think about the fact that there were so many people who went through the actual Holocaust that didn't have pictures of their family to, to go by. Charles, yes, a dream that made us a family. And like that dream, any family worth having is worth fighting for. Period. Is Professor Charles Xavier? It is. Be mad at me later. We have to save ourselves now, please. Magnus Lenscher chose another name. Mag you remember him, Magnus. Remember what he was meant to do. Destroy everything. Well, maybe not. All right, welcome back. Period. Now let's save everybody else quickly. Blink's gone. Oh. See how y'all needed Magnus and you were trying to take him out? Everybody take a breath. Magnus is like, just kidding, guys. We're leaving. Bye. <laughs> oh, see, I'm petty. I would have let it drop like this close to the White House and then like pulled it back up. Oh. God. Huh? What? What? Don't you dare end there. Okay. Howdy. Must be a damn fool walking in here like we're friends. Who? Oh, we're friends. Oh, Bishop. Hey, bro. I looked for months. I couldn't find a trace of them or the damn asteroid. Yeah, they definitely teleported. Luckily, this ain't our first time at the X-Men are dead. <laughs> Bishop's like, I've got a few chapters I could tell you about. And more. When? Exactly. Yanked our friends through time. Yep. And now we gotta go rescue the X-Men. Yes, let's go. I'm ready. Now. Right now. I'm ready right now. Three. Oh. Sis, you are going to freak the locals out. Okay, she still has her powers. That's good, but maybe not. Rogue, you don't even know the situation. What are you doing? Observe, observe, observe. I think they were playing a game. Maybe not. Sorry, those were, I thought those were like, I thought those were like game sticks. I didn't realize they were blades. <laughs> Never mind. Do you know that you're saving the good guy? We are not in Kansas. 3960 AD, the future. Okay, thank God they're together at least. Bright Morrow. Bright Morrow. Okay, these are these four are all together. Oh, he's a mutant. Magnus is here too. Perhaps our recently rescued friend holds the answers to our location. Oh yeah, I guess in the brain you don't have to speak the same language. I don't know. My name is Jean Grey. This is my husband. What do those markings look like, Bastion markings? You may call me Mother Ascani. Uh-oh. Leader of Clan Ascani. Clan. I don't like that word. Who the hell are you now? Nathan. Come. Nathan. My name is N. Sabanu. Okay. First step. Now. What? Huh? Oh. Oh, this is not the same Earth. Oh, dear. Yep. All my stars and garters. To be gone. Oh, no. I want the rest right now. Oh, my God. Season two had better be, like, airing in two months maximum. Because what? Is that really it? Let me just check. Are you going to marvel us and actually give us an ending scene this time? No? For real? For real? Oh, no. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, hey. 
That was so much. <laughs> if there's one thing X-Men gonna do, it's gonna pack a hell of a lot of stuff in a really short amount of time. We got 40 minutes that time, like a good 40, a little bit, almost 42 minutes, but it was so much. Like the contents of that episode could have easily been three and still like three full half hour episodes. Like there was so much. I'm definitely gonna have to rewatch it again and just like, just see what else I missed. Just the cameos alone had my brain rolling. I had to literally go back and rewind because my brain was like so busy trying to identify who I was looking at that I wasn't paying attention to what was happening. Where to begin? Where to begin? <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, well, let's deal with, let's deal with, I guess, what's what's the easier part of this? There's no easier part. All these parts are kind of huge in big ways. Um, So many themes that were going on here. I guess I'll just talk about pairs because I feel like there's no way to like, compartmentalize this story too much without everything kind of intersecting and touching in some way. There is Professor X and Eric. And I really love that even though we didn't get a lot of it until these last few episodes, the remembrance, the throwback to the foundation of the friendship that is between Professor X and Eric. If you watch the newer versions, the Fox versions of the X-Men movies, not the old ones, like not the ones from the 90s, but the newer ones, I feel like those movies, one of the things they did really well was highlighting the fact that these two people, even though they have very opposing views on a lot of matters, there was this underlying current of respect and love between them and brother brotherhood. And <clears throat> that really became clutch in this episode more than ever, because we see that after all that happened, you know, Xavier trying to take over Magnus's mind, being interrupted, and then what happens with Wolverine, and then of course Charles has got to go back in because Magnus is obviously very much not going to cooperate at this point. And I love the way he created this whole flashback fake scenario where him and Magnus first met and, you know, built that bond that became so strong over so many decades. And here that at first, like, I love that they showed that both of them at first were scared to even mention the word mutant because it was still such a taboo thing which would have been, I think, based on what we're seeing in the flashback that was probably around the 60s-ish, somewhere in there. Yeah, the music would say, it put us around the 60s, 70s. But anyway, and then they expose the fact that they're both mutants for to each other. And then we already hear the differing ideologies, right? Charles is super optimistic. Still is, but not as optimistic as he probably was back then, right? You just see the bright-eyed, just everything is rainbows kind of viewpoint that he has of, oh my gosh, you know, I think that once humanity finds out about, out about mutants and what we can do and we're all going to help humanity, it's going to be great. They're going to love us. We're going to live together. And it's going to be a great, beautiful party fest, right? Like he was just so, bless him, so optimistic. And then there's Magnus who has been through so much already at this point. He's lived through one of the worst atrocities that have happened in our living time. He survived it, but he lost so much during that time. And he has seen the ugliness of humanity when there wasn't superpowers involved. That was just a matter of your ethnicity, just your ethnicity, your belief system was enough for people to commit those horrible things against him, to take his family from him. And here's this man talking about, no, 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 here's a whole new layer of, of, of humanity or society that's completely different than humanity. It's gonna go great, right? So I really like that they showed that this is how these differing point of views happen, how they started, but also how, in my opinion, it showed that they were needed, that both Charles and Eric, they really need each other to kind of balance each other out because Eric is far too pessimistic and understandably so. You go through something like that as a child, it's going to jade or not going to, it can, because there are definitely, there were people who survived the Holocaust who were, still had a lot of faith in humanity and who did not look at the rest of the world or the rest of their lives through a very cynical lens, but a lot of them did. And it was very understandable why. And it's, it's something that's necessary in the sense of, if you're someone who's never experienced those things or seen how bad humanity can get, it's, it's a blind spot for you. And you can't really understand or, be able to see where people might come from when they're thinking in that way. And that was Charles, right? I don't know which background they're going with as far as Charles's past in this show, but some of the ones that I know about is that Charles grew up rich. He grew up with a loving family. I mean, there's the varying stories about his half brother, step brother, Juggernaut, but by and large, Charles had a good upbringing. He had a loving family. He had wealth. He had pretty much everything at his disposal. The only thing that really was his hardship in life was the fact that A, he was a mutant and B, him not having use of his legs. But other than that, his life was charmed. And so 
When you come from that background, it's easy to have a lot more optimism about the world versus Magnus, who we already know his background, right? I don't think he even started out with a particularly wealthy or successful family, but then going through the atrocities of the camps, barely surviving that, and then being a mutant on top of that, it was just like one bad thing after another. And so Magnus not seeing that life actually can be peaceful and good and that people can be kind and, and caring and, and have that semblance of family, of course, that's a blind spot for him. So this is where the two of them become like that, that open window, that, that other viewpoint that the other just can't have because of their life experiences. You know, Charles needs to be tempered down a little bit. He needs to be given a little bit of perspective, but at the same time, Magnus needs somebody to show him that not all humanity is like that. And even during the worst times of his life, there were people who were risking their lives and fighting to end those things or to harbor and protect people and do things to try to change the way things were. So that's the way it always is. In any form of oppression that's happened in the world, not everybody has been down with it. You know what I'm saying? There's always been people who had a different viewpoint. So they need each other. That friendship was something that they both needed in their lives for viewpoint, but also they had more in common than not. And they definitely had this love that's kept them from completely abandoning each other, no matter how opposite they felt about certain things. And I love that line that Charles used with him saying that, you know, we fought, we've hurt each other multiple times, but we've never abandoned each other because we're brothers. And I think that was just such a good metaphor for what it is to have long relationships with anyone in your life, whether that's your, your family members, whether that's your partner, whether that's your kids, like anyone you've had or friends, like anyone you've had a, a sustained relationship with. And to me, like a sustained relationship is like anything more than 10 years. Cause I feel like shorter relationships, if you've got that much drama going on in a short-term relationship, you need to ask some questions. But when you've been friends with somebody, when it goes into the decades, it's inevitable that you're going to hurt each other either on purpose or by accident. At some point there's gonna be ups, there's gonna be downs. But when you truly care about each other, that's what keeps you from completely walking away is because you realize that there's that love, there's still that foundation despite all of the waves. And so I really like the way he described that to Magnus. And we see that, you know, once Magnus bro broke out of the initial Ill illusion that Charles was doing, he basically was like, like, what are you doing? And Charles is like, I need you to fix, I need you to fix this magnetic force because everyone's gonna die. And of course we hear Magnus like, so? <laughs> and in his usual petty ways, like, yeah, anyways, who cares? Like, let them go. Like, they were good. they don't care about us. And Charles brings up what I brought up last episode where he's like, what about all the mutants that are gonna be in the, in the dark? How are they gonna survive with nothing? And then Magnus says one of the most villain G things you can say. When he says, evolution happens in the dark, baby. He said, listen, some of them mutants are, are not even good enough anyways. The ones who are meant to survive, you know, they're gonna push through. They're gonna evolve. They're gonna get to the next level and they'll have me to thank for it. But if they don't make it, psh, you know, they was never they were never strong enough in the first place. I was like, sir, sir, you talk about how you think the mutants need to be their own separate society when you're already ready to create a new, whole new class system. But anyways, so Charles basically lets them know, gives them the ultimatum, says, listen, either you do it or I'm gonna have to take over your mind and do it, but I really don't want to. So please do this. And Magnus is like, you know, if you do that, you risk breaking both of us, right? And Charles is like, yup. <laughs> You're not the only one who can be a G here, Magnus. It's one, it's one or the other. Which one of it's gonna be? So unfortunately, um, Magnus chose violence as I think we all knew he would. And they get into that brain battle. But of course, Magnus should have known better. When it comes to telepathy, that's Charles's domain. Ain't nobody topping Charles or touching Charles when it comes to telepathy. Only person that they know of that could do that is Gene. That's it. Nobody else can come close. That is his ballpark. So bless Magnus for trying though. He definitely made you know Professor work for it. But we see it happens and Professor X does restore it. But it's not quite in time in the sense of we see that the human governments are panicking. They're freaking out because they're, they're seeing what's happened. They don't know what's going on in the asteroid. They don't know what's going on in Galapagos. And of course the mutantators are using this to their advantage to be like, see, this is what we told you about the mutants. And they have the Magnus protocol that they created, which is supposed to destroy this whole asteroid that uh, Magneto created just in case, which already lets you know that they never really trusted Magneto or wanted to. They'd always had a backup plan to take him out. But anyways, we see that the president really was trying to hold out as long as possible, but there was a lot of pressure. We see that even Captain America and T'Chaka, um, uh, Black Panther, well, I guess, was he the Black Panther at that? He would have, I don't know about that. I'm not sure of the timelines of when T'Challa took over for T'Chaka. I mean, obviously I know the movie timeline, but the comic I think is a little bit different. So for y'all who know, you can let me know in the comments. But anyway, I believe he was the Black Panther at that time. So T'Chaka says even the same thing, like don't do it. 
Like, let's wait, let's see what can happen. And that's very interesting when you think about it because T'Chaka is not a mutant. So he really doesn't have a vested interest in this particular uh, battle, but I really like that he was like, mm, slow down. But anyway, um, I loved all the cameos that we got in that whole instance when they were figuring out whether or not to turn, you know, sorry, while that whole uh, battle between Professor X and Magneto was going, there were so many that flashed by, I did not catch them all. I'll definitely have to go back and rewatch. I recognized a few. Some of them I recognized, but could not think of the name. So yeah, it was great though to see all of that. Like that is so cathartic after all these years of having this separate X-Men world from the rest of Marvel. It's just so nice to see all these different faces pop up. My comic heart just, ugh, oh, it swells. But anyway, so all of that is going on. They do write the gravity. And of course, it's bad news bears for the people on Earth because we see the Sentinel start to wake up. And unfortunately, we also see that Bastion starts getting on his soapbox crap. We'll get to him in a minute. Let me finish up with Professor X and Magneto. But he does end up turning everything back on, but it is at a great cost. We see that it breaks Mike Magnus's psyche. I was scared for a second that he wiped everything that Magnus was, but thankfully, or maybe scarily, Professor X knew what to do. He was like, yeah, yeah, um, let me just tap in with the, with the team. Uh, excuse me, by the way, hi guys, yeah. Still inside the mind, kind of broke Magnus' psyche. Whoopsies, <laughs> don't worry. Been here before, just gonna walk him through, coming back, just putting it back together over here because if I don't fix it and I'm still in here, it's gonna be bad news for everybody, yes. Let's, let's talk about the fact that Professor X has enough experience with breaking psyches that he knows how to put them back together. Terrifying when you think about it. But as I said in the episode, it's nice to see Professor X get G once in a while because he's so kumbaya, pacifist, I love everything, which we love. We know we need that with, with mutants, but it is nice just to see him lose his shit once in a while. Like, just nice to see him get annoyed, you know, and just remind mother suckers that he is not the one. He's not the one to play with. People think that they, so many people mistake Professor X's kindness for weakness, and it's not. If he really wanted to shut the entire world down, he could. He just chooses not to. You breathe because of him. People need to remember that. But anyway, so he goes to work doing all that, and we get some of those beautiful moments, all those wonderful bars about family, all those things around pain. I Like, there's so many good um, so many good messages that were given in this episode around mental health, around what we carry, about how we carry it, about what we need in order to continue to be healthy and move through this life when we're carrying all this. He's absolutely right. I love the representation that the show chose of the stormy sea outside of a fairly fragile looking place. That's how a lot of us are when we're going through darkness. A lot of us have our stormy place that sits in the background. For some of us, that place is more stormy than not. But I love the representation of the X-Men and his friends and his family being on that lifeboat, quite literally a lifeboat that he just needs to allow himself to go to. I loved how Professor X said it feels cold and it feels like the waves are going to overcome you, but you got to let yourself just go with it so you can go back to the service. You have to let it roll over so you can get back to the top. And as I said in the episode, great metaphor for grief. That's what grief feels like when you're in the throes of it. It does feel like it's something pulling you under, like it's trying to drown you. It reminds me a lot of in WandaVision, I think it was. Yeah, that there was a, that Wanda did a very similar um, speech when she was talking to, oh gosh, what's his name? when she was talking to Vision about how she felt about all the loss she'd experienced. And she used the same expression of being like uh, at a beach with the waves trying to pull her under. And it's scary, but grief is something you have to go through. And the only way to process grief is to go through it and let yourself go through those emotions and let it kind of pull you under for a while and then let yourself resurface. It's scary though, because a lot of times for a lot of us, we feel like if we, if we get pulled under, we won't be able to come back up. But Many times we, we can and we will. And if we are having trouble with the coming back, that's where that life raft comes in. Your friends, your family, all types of mental health care options. Like there are ways that, you know, the people can throw a life raft to help you if you're struggling to come back on your own. But anyways, great, great, great advice, metaphors, and just messages around how to handle those types of things. Um, heartbreaking message to you around Eric saying he was trying to remember his family. He couldn't remember his parents' faces. And... Like I said, I got a little choked up because it's just, it just made me think that how thankful and how grateful I am that I have my parents and that I knew my parents and that I got to grow up and, and know what I was going to look like or know what my future looked like, as, as Magnus put it. We take a lot of things for granted if, if we have our parents, if we grew up with our parents, if our parents are still alive, that if you got the opportunity to grow up with your parents, that is a blessing. 
a lot of us take it for granted and think it's just like everyone does, but no, there's a lot of people who are robbed of that very, very young. And it, depending on how young, they may have no recollection, no memories to speak of, to call on when it comes to their families. And so hearing Magneto say that, that just, it was heartbreaking, but it gives us more, again, more of a picture of why he is the way he is and why his extremes around protecting himself and protecting the people he cares about and also how cold he can be, right? About, um, about being abandoned, right? The, how he remembered Rogue and he's like, no, she left me, you left me, right? Like when you have lost people, especially the way that he has and he lost them so young, Magnus will take people leaving him on a level that is next, okay? <laughs> to say the least. He's gonna take that to a whole new level because it's gonna feel like abandonment because he's been abandoned. Of course, his parents didn't abandon him on purpose, but that's the, the feeling is the same. So anyway, just really, really great storytelling for Magnus in this episode. And I appreciated that they took their time with it, but also seeing Charles guide him through that and be empathetic. No, yeah, mm, I say sympathetic with a little bit. He, Charles can't be fully empathetic because he didn't have the same upbringing. He didn't go through the same things. And Magnus said that multiple times. You don't know what I've been through. You don't understand. And it's true to the exact degree, Charles does not understand what he's been through, but he can empathize quite literally actually because of his power. But Charles has experienced loss. Charles does know what it's like to be hurt. Charles knows what it's like to be abandoned. So, I mean, not necessarily abandoned by family, but abandoned by people in his life. So he knows some of what Eric's going through in some respect. So the point is he kept trying to let Eric know that I am here and I do get with your in pain and I do get why you are the way you are, but I'm still here and I'm not leaving. Like that's why I'm here. So I really liked it. The symbolism of him pulling Magnus out from the waves when that first big wave came and he freaked out. But in the end, we see that Charles was still there, had his arms around him, pulling him to the surface, letting him know that, yeah, I'm still gonna be here. I'm not letting you go. So eventually they do manage to make their way through and thank God it is just in time because as we saw, the asteroid was hurling to earth because of Bastion. So I believe we can talk about Bastion now. Going into what happened on Earth, of course, as the Magnus, sorry, <clears throat> as the magnetism was coming back, Bastion had already overtaken the people inside of the cave and then outside, of course, Sinister had Cable knock Jean out. But judging by what happened in the last episode, I saw Jean kind of let go, right? Like it's not that I do believe she definitely could have gone toe to toe with Cable for a while. But as I said last episode, she didn't want to hurt him. That was never her intention. She couldn't hurt him because she still sees him as a son. And when she was falling into the water, I was like, she definitely let go. It wasn't because that cable overpowered her. It's because she let go. And of course that slow shot of her singing to the bottom, I was like, mm -hmm. you need to sing to the bottom so that you can rise, baby. <laughs> that meant that the Phoenix was ready to rise and I knew it was coming and she needed to surrender to it in order for that to happen. So we saw that in light of all of that, Bastion came in, restructured his face, grew a goatee for some reason. Like I said, for some reason when these villains have their evolution, they'd be growing hair lately. I don't know what that's about, but digressing. He gives his speeches because villains have to give speeches. It's all because he knows that there's valid points being made, right? His mother was human. He's sitting there looking down on her, even though he went and changed her into this robot who now can't even move because of what he did. Like he took away her ability to just live as a human spark. But of course he didn't want to talk about that. And which is why I love when he went and tried to taunt Cable about his mama and Cable got the ability to speak on his own again. Cable looked at him and said, oh wait, about mamas, how's yours doing? How, how's your mommy? How's your, um, is she okay? Is she okay? <laughs> love it. Love that Nathan's got a smart mouth. Scott is too stiff for that. But I love that Nathan's like, actually, I will drag you, your mama. I will take all of your edges, I don't care. And we saw a sense that Sebastian got when someone started talking about his mama. So I was like, mm, okay, you can talk about mamas, but when they turn the gun around, suddenly you're sensitive, suddenly it's a problem. But anyhow, he was doing his gloating moments. He of course sent the Sentinels back into work as they started to come back online. It would have been all bad very quickly. And he crushed, or not crushed, he stepped on the collar, or actually I guess it was a headband. I thought it was a collar for some reason. But anyways, he stepped on that. And while he's in the middle of his gloating moment, I love that Nathan gave a line, something along the lines of, you really should have paid attention when I talked about my mom, because you talked about all the times that I went back and tried to save us and the amount of times my mom died. That should have given you the clear clue that my mom does not just die. That's not her thing. She comes back. 
multiple times, okay? If there's two things that Jean Grey does, it's faint and rise again, okay? <laughs> but anyways, we see that the Phoenix Force does make a cameo and I was praying for that since episode, or sorry, since uh, the first part of this finale, but she finally came out, she showed out, she reassembled the inhibitor crown and she released all her friends. And before Bastion could react, she slapped that sucker back on, sat him down somewhere, and then she dealt with Sinistar's little ass. Because of course he's talking smack. Oh, every time you well, every time you do this, it doesn't matter how many times you do this, but and he's trying to talk. I'm like, sir. And I love that she's like, yeah, you know what? You sitting there talking about how I, you know, how I need to think about this, think about that. She's like, all I do is think, sir. And I'm tired of you. I'm tired. So she said, let me. Let me just be clear about how tired I am of you. Let me just reach inside of you and take your actual DNA that you've modified and stolen and corrupted with all the other DNA you've stolen. Let me just let me just pull that out and toss it to the side because I'm tired of you. So you, she's like, what does he say? The DNA that you've stolen to continue to look young and relevant. She said, sir, you're obsolete. And she said, the Phoenix Force is here to burn away that that is obsolete. I said, Gene, I said, Gene, don't hurt him. Don't hurt him. Don't hurt him, but she did. I love it. And that man actually had the audacity to be like, please, no, please, no. shut up. All the torture and pain you've caused and you were reveling in it. And you have the audacity to ask her not to take back what wasn't yours in the first place, sir. If there is one thing Sinister is gonna have, it's audacity. But anyways, I love that she stripped him down to nothing but a big headed, saggy faced weirdo in a bad costume. I said it, I don't like the costume. But anyway, I loved it. And I love how Morph actually added pain to the injury by mocking him. He said, this is what you look like. In case you need a mirror, this is what you look like. <laughs> oh, so gloriously petty. Anyways, he ran away, sad and old. But again, my big problem here, as I've said multiple times, is that Jean should have killed him. She should have killed him. I know it's not the hero thing to do, but if it's anybody you should kill, it's sinister. That man is crazy. All he's going to do if he still has breath is find a way to steal all the powers back and make sure you can't do that to him again. Like, anyways, we know this is Marvel verse. We don't have people out here taking out other people because it's not the heroic thing to do. But like, can we get some Punisher action in here? Just take him out, right? If Punisher was there, he would just wanna put a bullet in his head right then and just be like, let me just, I'll do it for you, Gene, I gotcha. But anyway, so that happens. Bastion loses control of the Sentinels. We see that the humans go back to normal. We'll have to see how many of them actually want to continue being normal or if they're gonna just like these powers and continue doing what they were doing anyways. But either way, they've got control and autonomy over themselves now. And so while everybody is celebrating how great it is that, you know, Gene the, and the Phoenix Force came back, which was temporary, I thought it was kind of funny. The Phoenix Force came in and was like, well, that's my limit. Five minutes, cool, gotta go back to being a normal human. Call me when you're gonna die again, Gene, bye. I mean, we could have used it just a little bit longer is all I'm saying. Since we had to go back to the asteroid anyways, we could have used the Phoenix Force like one more time. But anyway, <clears throat> while they're sitting there and celebrating all that, we see that Bastion is not gone, of course. They didn't take him out. He's pissed. He's like, what? I can't believe this happened. How did I not account for the Phoenix Force? Even though, hello, he should have known that Gene was the Phoenix. But anyways, he couldn't really do much about that because the Phoenix is like outside of even his knowledge base of things that he can possibly protect against. And he ends up ripping poor Nathan's arm off because it's a piece of tech from the future. And he uses it to restructure and reshape himself. And because of what he's able to do, he's able to just like basically rewrite his own DNA with it, which is crazy when you think about it. But anyhow, he turns into like this dark angel of death basically. And he's like, all right, well, since I can't read, I don't have time to go and get all my Sentinels again or whatever. I'm just gonna go up to that asteroid. I'm gonna head up to Magneto's asteroid. I'm gonna send that sucker right back into earth, cause an ELE and I'm just gonna be like, Mm, you know, deuces from the sky. And they're like, crap, what are we gonna do? Because none of them are able to even touch him at this point because he is completely different and again, super powerful. So thankfully, Gene's able to send a message up to the asteroid first with very little notice to be like, yeah, bro is coming real fast, in hot. He's planning on taking down the asteroid. Do what you can to stop him. We're gonna try to come up there and help you. But yeah, we're, we, <laughs> we're literally working with a broken sentinel, sentinel right now. So. That happens. We have another really good battle, in my opinion, between Rogue and Sunspot. And who else was in there? Everybody, everyone who was at the top basically gave, I love that Rogue got a chance to take out her anger and her hate and her, just her hurt over Gambit on, on Bastion because he is really the person behind it all. It's his fault that Gambit is dead. And she finally has like the person to blame for it, right? She saw like earlier in the season, she was going through all the people responsible. She finally has the end of the line where that's concerned. And she beat his ass good. Like if he was not half machine, he would have been dead. 
she did not hold back. So I was like, yes, girl, get your therapy in. You need it. And I love that she used his name was Gambit. Remember it? Like, mm, throwback. Love that. And so she gave him a good beating. Sunspot, bless his heart, he tried. He's very new to his powers, but I do think he could do quite a bit of damage because I think solar damage is different than the type of stuff that he protects against, but don't quote me on that. But either way, I love that Roberto came out and tried, even though he was new. And I love that, that cute little speech that he gave Robe before it was all happening. He was like, so I think we know how this is gonna go because I'm like new with my powers. I'm not very good at them and stuff. He's basically like, I'm gonna go first, guys. I'm the red shirt. I'm the guy who's gonna get killed first because I barely know how to use my powers. So let me just go ahead and say my goodbyes and I'll use right now. But thankfully Rogue was like, listen, we can't go in like that. The odds are never in our favor, but you gotta try our best, right? So anyway, he went out there and he tried and he did a little bit of damage, nothing significant, but it helped. Every little bit helps. And then we see that, you know, the battle was only a bit of a temporary, it only worked temporarily, but it was enough to keep things from going bad too quickly. And I really liked the way that they showed all the different ways that they were being attacked. And I really like the way they showed how all the different members did their attack. I said multiple times in the episode though, that I feel like a coordinated attack would have been better. That's not necessarily the X-Men's strong suit at this point. Like they all have their strengths and they know how to kind of bounce off each other, but like a coordinated attack would have been good with someone like Bastion. But either way, it was cool to see everyone get a chance to show off a little bit. And in the end, they ended up buying enough time. And actually I have to wait, I, before I even go on to that, kudos to Jubilee because the line about what you're gonna do, kill me with the 4th of July was actually fire. That was actually a good one. I, I can't take that away from him. I'm like, that was a good one, Bastion. But anyway, the fact that she ended up melting his face though, I was like, she said there might be fireworks, so fireworks be hot, girl. Don't try me, don't try me like that. So anyway, coming back, we see that eventually they stall and give enough time for the ground team to arrive in a Sentinel. And I really like the symbolism of him thinking that his family was coming to save him when really it was actually there to take him out. Like that was very symbolic that he almost got taken out by his very own creation, but it wasn't quite able to do that. And I, I loved again, the symbolism that they showed after that of when they were all preparing to attack him while he's trying to lift this giant sentinel leg off of him. And the symbolism of him fighting under the weight of this thing that he's created, this, this dream of destruction that he's had and asking for help and just giving it up and sparing himself, right? Like that's literally the, the symbolism of being crushed by this dream or crushed by this hope, by this burden, really is really what it was, but he said it was his hope. I thought that that was not lost on me. I think they did a good job of that. And I love how afterwards Scott was like, actually everyone stand down. And they were like, huh? And they're like, he can't, he can't save himself right now and fight us at the same time. There's no way. If he lets go, he's gonna get crushed. He could ask for help. We could help him and get that off of him. And that would be the way that we all survive. But he has to make the decision right now. So let's try to appeal to him. Now that apart, I was like, why bother? Like he's such a weirdo. But anyway, that's the X-Men's way. That is Charles Xavier training 101. Of course they were like, here's all the reasons why you need to not give up on humanity, blah, blah, blah. I was like, at this point personally, I was like, is there anyone, I just wanted Rogue to actually get on top of the leg of the Sentinel and just, just start shoving it down because I'm kind of over Bastion, but that's not very X-Men of me. That's not the message the X-Men are all about. So they did try to reason with him and he didn't really want to hear it. And I don't think he was really ready to turn any pages where that was concerned. But anyways, they didn't have time to even get through the speech because then the US protocol came in and the Project Magneto to take down the asteroid. And again, I don't know why those dummies thought that was a good idea. Like you, none of you have even been up there to see what's what's happening with that, to know those missiles were gonna work. And then you knock it out of orbit and you have the audacity to be like, oh no, now what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? It's coming straight to earth and we shot it down. Now how do I, oh, I guess we just gonna sit here and wait for it to land, huh? Like dummies. And it's exactly, I love how all the superheroes were watching like, Dummy, like this is why we told you not to do it. This is why we told you. Captain America told you not to do it. Black Panther told you not to do it. Every other superhero, if they could have called in, they would have been like, don't do this. Watching this thing come shooting to earth. But anyway, <clears throat> we have that happen. And once again, a team effort is necessary in order to slow it down or stop it or see if they can help it get back into orbit before it hits earth. Because obviously something that large, landing at that, the velocity is going to cause a lot of damage. I think they said it was gonna be East US, right? Most likely, because everything's New York based in that comic. But anyways, Beast came up with an idea last minute, but he was like, it's very much a Hail Mary, no guarantees that we're all gonna walk out of this, but we gotta try. And we see that Scott and Jean decide to give a goodbye message to Nathan, which I thought was really, really sweet. And I like the line where Nathan said, or sorry, where um, Scott said, you know, I, I'm, I'm not gonna make the same mistake that my dad did, which was not say goodbye when necessary. 
And, you know, Nathan kind of took it on the chin, of course. And then he made the comment about how Nathan had his eyes. And then I loved what Jean did with, she, you know, basically fixing things so that Nathan could actually see Cyclops' eyes, right? Because the only person who's seen them at this point now, since he's become an adult, is Jean. Through that story we heard a few episodes back about when she had the Phoenix Force was able to actually look at him. But yeah, that whole Summer's Family moment was really, really sweet. And I think it was necessary. I mean, and it's a good thing they did because even though they didn't actually die, they ended up disappearing, which we'll get to in a minute. But yeah, I thought that was a really good moment. And I think Nathan really needed that because yeah, he had a lot of questions and obviously a lot of hurt too, because he thought he was abandoned. He knows now he wasn't, but there's still a lot that he's going to have to work through. And I think it's going to help him knowing that he had two parents that do love him and still want to be a parent to him in one, one way or another, even if they can't be there for him or raise him anymore. And I really love that he also said that, you know, when he heard all the adventures, he was like, all I thought was that that should have been me. Like I should have been there too. I wanted to be with my parents going through that. So yeah, it was kind of a tender, soft moment for everyone. Glad they included that, enjoyed it a lot. And yeah, we see that they went to work on trying to slow this asteroid down, all the different factions doing what they could really just you know showing what they're made of and i love that like x-men showing that the one thing they don't do is give up and so it was great moments right up until then but then we see that thanks to what was going on with professor x and eric eric made it back just in time magneto lives as he says and thank god magneto was able to bring it back because he was pretty much the only one who was going to keep that from making at least a little bit of a mess and losing everybody in the process and so yeah he managed to stop it bring that sucker right back into space. And the presidency had the audacity to clap. They had the audacity to clap in that room. But anyways, everyone cheered, got them back into space. And then we see that something happens. They get pulled out of that space time point. No one knows why, no one knows what happened. It looked from the distance like they exploded, but it's very clear to see that that was not an explosion. So they disappear back on earth. They have no idea what happened. So we see that after six months of searching, Forge now has a wall of all the different people that are missing or presumed dead. I'm gonna be honest, I actually would love to have a little poster of that. I think that'd be really cool. And he's trying to reform the X-Men with what they've got left. He's got Jubilee, uh, Sunspot, Wolverine, but we have no idea where his condition is. They didn't really re revisit where he's at. And Morph? Yeah, and Morph. I think those are the ones that are left on Earth now. And everybody else disappeared. And actually speaking of Morph, just a sidebar before we go on with the time jump, what do we think it means when uh, Morph was stand, you know, Morph was bedside beside Logan and Logan was starting to gain, like regain a little bit of his consciousness when they were crashing to earth and he was a asking for Jean, shock. And Morph's like, she's not here, but I can do it. Morph's into Jean and says, I love you or I love you too. So just heal. Like, I just I just think it's interesting that he would choose to do that. I mean, I know it might just be that he wanted to help him heal, but there's been a lot of interesting moments placed throughout the whole season of just Morph and Wolverine, of him either tormenting Wolverine or taunting him or doing things like this. So maybe it's just that they're close. But anyway, I think it was an interesting, it was an interesting moment. I don't know. Put your thoughts below what you think that might've been about. But anyway, so that's what's happening on the ground. And then we see that Bishop reappears. And of course, Forge doesn't know who he's at. Forge doesn't know who he is, but he explains that like, what he thinks happened is not what happened. He's like, they're not dead. They're gone, but they're not gone in the sense of like, where, where are they? It's like, when are they? It was a time jump. It wasn't necessarily a distance jump. And, of course, Forge is like, huh? And Bishop's like, don't worry about it. I'm good at this. We're going to figure it out. So cool. They're going to figure that out. And, you know, I guess, I don't know what they're going to build. It's Bishop. Who knows? But, oh yeah, Bishop and Cable are going to finally meet. That's going to be cool. Or meet as adults. Anyways, so that's the Earth side of things. And then for the people who are time jumped, we see they actually got separated. Not everyone, though. The vast majority of people got put to, in the past. Yeah, into each. No, it wasn't the past. It's also a future but it's Egypt. And then we see that the only two that were left alone were Rogue and Nightcrawler. And they are in, did it say where? Or a different time. They're in a different time. Possibly the same place, but a different time. And then the rest of the group, they are in Egypt in the future. And they, <laughs> Magneto sees yet again, people going after a mutant. And of course he's over it. He's like, enough. I am like, I just, I literally just went through this. And they're like, where are we? Maybe this person can help us. And this man gives him a name and I don't remember the name. I don't, I'm not familiar at all with this character. I'm sure someone is, 
But yes, so they're all together and then they look over the horizon and they see that there's a whole crazy futuristic slash ancient city. So yeah, I feel like not only be in the future, but I feel like there might be in a completely different timeline as well. So, so I'm kind of mad that we have no more episodes, but that was a great way to end the season. Could not have been a better ending, honestly. So, so good. The messages, the heart, the, the, the nail biting moments, all of it was in there. They couldn't have done it better. This whole season, I can't say enough about it. This was such a good show. I didn't really think it was gonna be bad to be honest, but I thought it was gonna be cheesy, but like at worst, but this has just exceeded my expectations by so much. And as I've said way earlier in the season, my expectations for the MCU are now like, like hand out of frame high. It's possible. The storytelling is, is possible. The writing is possible. Will Marvel do it though? Will the MCU actually do it? I'm praying that they do because this ante is so high. The only critique actually I would give it is that I could have taken more. I could have done with one hour episodes. This could have been 10 one hour episodes and I would have watched all of it avidly, raptly, and still wanted more. That's how good it was. So yeah, I, I've talked enough. This was a really long review, but because it was for the end of the season and because we had so much to cover, but yeah, overall loved this season. Love this show. Cannot wait for the next season to drop. So yeah, I enjoyed this so, so much. This episode I enjoyed. This whole season I enjoyed. Thank you so much to those of you who've been watching my reactions through this entire season. You've been great. The comments, all the information you've been giving me, the background, the corrections when I make mistakes. Thank you so much. All the love, the engagement. I appreciate it so very much, guys. Really, it's been so much fun watching the show with you. And if this is all that you watch from me, then I guess I will see you in the next season. But I do hope you can find something else in my catalog. I watch a lot of really good stuff here. So hopefully you'll be able to continue to watch me and join me on this journey. So again, thank you so much for watching along with me, guys. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope to see you in the next video.